ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੀਡੀ ਗਾਈਡ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਚੈਨਲ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਇੱਕ ਮੌਕ ਟੈਸਟ ਕਰਨ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹਾਂਗੀ ਇਹ ਪੂਰਾ ਮੌਕ ਟੈਸਟ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਉਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਮੌਕ ਟੈਸਟ ਚੱਲੂਗਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਸੇਮ ਸੇਮ ਹੀ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੁੰਦਾਗਾ ਚਲੋ ਬਿਨਾਂ ਟਾਈਮ ਵੇਸਟ ਕੀਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਨੂੰ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਵਧੀਆ ਲੱਗੀ ਤਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਨੂੰ ਲਾਈਕ ਕਰਿਓ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਵੀ ਪੀਟੀ ਕਰਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਡ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੋਸਤਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰਿਓ ਸੋ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦੀ ਲੱਗੀ ਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਕਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੀਡੀਓਜ਼ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਕਾਦੇ ਲਈ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਵੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਮਤਲਬ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਜਾਣਨੇ ਆਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਨਰਵਸ ਹੁੰਨੇ ਆਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਫਰਸਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਤਾਂ ਹੀ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਵੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਵੀ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਮਾਹੌਲ ਜਾਂ ਬਣ ਜੇ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮ ਵਾਲਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬੋਲਣਾ ਕੀ ਕੁਛ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆਪਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਦੱਸ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਕੁਆਲੀਫਿਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੱਸ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਕਿੱਥੋਂ ਦੇ ਰਹਿਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਪੀਟੀ ਕਿਉਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਬੋਲ ਕੇ ਦਿਖਾ ਦਿੰਦੀ ਹਾਂ ਮਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਇਜ਼ ਨਵਨੀਤ ਸ਼ਰਮਾ ਆਈ ਬਿਲੋਂਗ ਟੂ ਵਿਲੇਜ ਨਮੋਲ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਡਨ ਮਾਈ ਸੀਨੀਅਰ ਸੈਕੰਡਰੀ ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਫ্রম ਸੀਬੀਐਸਈ ਨਿਊ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਅਬਰੋਡ ਫॉर ਮਾਈ ਫਰਦਰ ਸਟੱਡੀਜ਼ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਈ ਆਈ ਐਮ ਟੇਕਿੰਗ ਪੀਟੀਈ ਟੈਸਟ ਇਹੀ ਕੁਝ ਬੋਲਣਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਬਸ ਪੀਟੀਈ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਬਾਕੀ ਸਾਰਾ ਟੈਸਟ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਹੀ ਮੌਕ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਹੀ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਉਵੇਂ ਹੀ ਮੌਕ ਟੈਸਟ ਚੱਲੂਗਾ ਤਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਧਿਆਨ ਨਾਲ ਦੇਖਿਓ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਨੂੰ ਐਂਡ ਤੱਕ Nature offers no greater splendor than the starry sky on a clear dark night silent and jeweled with the constellations of ancient myth and legend the night sky has inspired wonder throughout the ages a wonder that leads our imaginations far from the confines of earth and the pace of the present day and out into the distant reaches of space and cosmic time itself There is every reason to believe that effective regulations are not merely a luxury that only the rich can afford but an important foundation for a thriving private sector and economic growth. But the broad pattern of the past 5 years has been that the main reform efforts are taking place in rich countries. Children as young as 14 months old will spontaneously help others for no reward but a study of 3 to 5 year olds found that although they would spontaneously draw pictures if they were given a reward for drawing pictures then later they wouldn't make any drawings unless a reward was offered There are many reasons why water tastes stale when it is kept for a long time. Microorganisms play a big role in this phenomenon. When they grow, they release chemicals into the water from their metabolic activity. This evaporates over time, so the absence of it from water left out for a long period brings about a change in taste. A study found that the research funded by the soft drinks industry had different results from research funded by other sources and went on to suggest that they may have been biased by the research itself. The whole point of the scientific methods is to ensure the research results are not influenced by the source of funding. along with the customary classes on subjects such as finance accounting and marketing today's mba students are enrolling on courses for environmental policy and stewardship indeed more than half of business schools require a course in environmental sustainability or corporate social responsibility according to a survey of 91 us business schools published in october 2005 Many non-Japanese know a thing or two about traditional tea ceremony, its history, intricacies and religious origins. However, few people outside Japan have a deep understanding of the esoteric meaning of the practice. Indeed, even in Japan, the secret meaning of tea ceremony is little understood except by those who have devoted their lives to the discipline. Building trust is not anything that can be achieved overnight. Building trust is not anything that can be achieved overnight. There is not enough space for me in the car. There is not enough space for me in the car. Please make an appointment with your tutor about work. Please make an appointment with your tutor about work. 
The website has probably the most attractive designs and layouts. The website has probably the most attractive designs and layouts. <clears throat> the head of the department is available by the third day. The head of the department is available by the third day. Soil erosion can be caused by increasing rainfall and changes in plant growth. Soil erosion can be caused by increase in rainfall and plant growth. The quality is needed by a successful business manager similar to those of the school. The quality is needed by the business managers similar to those in the school. Modern businesses have adapted and been flexible in order to survive. Modern businesses have adapted and been flexible in order to survive. You may need to purchase an academic gown before the commencement. You may need to purchase an academic gown before the commencement. One study asked people to keep daily journals and recording their appreciation for their partners. One study asks people to keep their daily journal recording their appreciation for their partners. The university has a number of travel scholarships that students can apply for. The university have number of travel scholarships that students can apply for. There is a beautiful picture in front of me. Let me have a closer look. By looking more closely, I can see different trends are emerging out in this picture. And this is a hand-drawn picture of a line graph, which gives information about volunteer work. Moreover, I can see some colors in this picture, which are white, blue, etc. I can also see some numbers in this picture, which are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1990, 2000, 2003, and 2004. There are some words in this picture, which are male, female, year, and percentage. Overall, the picture is very informative. There is a beautiful picture in front of me. Let me have a closer look. By looking more closely, I can see different trends are emerging out in this picture. And this is a picture of weekly household spending Ireland according to food, medical, holiday, transport and housing. Moreover, I can see some colors in this picture which are white, blue, brown and yellow. I can also see some words in this picture which are food at home, medical, transport, housing, rent, purchase of cars, etc. I can also see some numbers in this picture which are 33, 47, 164, 124, 50, etc. Overall, the picture is very informative. There is a beautiful picture in front of me. Let me have a closer look. By looking more closely, I can see different trends are emerging out in this picture. And this is a map which gives information about Bermuda Triangle. Moreover, I can see some colors in this picture which are white, blue and green. I can also see some words in this picture which are Bermuda, Florida, Puerto Rico, Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico and Bermuda Triangle. There are no numbers in this picture. Overall, the picture is very informative. But you can see from the relatively crooked and narrow streets of the city of Rome as they look from above today, you can see that again, the city grew in a fairly ad hoc way, as I mentioned. It wasn't planned all at once, it just grew up over time, beginning in the 8th century BC. Now this is interesting, because what we know about the Romans is when they left to their own devices and they could build the city from scratch, they didn't let it grow in an ad hoc way. They, they structured it in a very care, very methodical way. That was basically based on military strategy and military planning. The Romans, they couldn't have conquered the world without obviously having a masterful military enterprise. And they were everywhere. They went on their various campaigns, their various military campaigns. They would build, build camps, and these camps were always laid out in a very geometrical plan along a grid, usually square or rectangular.
in this lecture the speaker was talking about the city of rome firstly he mentioned that city of rome has narrow streets moreover he told that they could build the city from scratch he then also told that they couldn't have conquered the world without military he then told that the military is very important for the city of rome uh, it was built uh, from scratch overall the lecture was very informative What do we watch with a screen and a projector? A movie, movie, film. When you bake a cake, what do you put the cake into? Microwave, oven. What is the antonym of entrance? exit exit <clears throat> what do we describe an event which happens once every year annual annual what is the literature that withstands centuries french What do we call the money an employer pay an employee because of the damage caused at work? Fine.
There comes a time in a desert ant's life when a piece of food is too large to ignore, but too heavy to lift. And the only way to get it home is to adopt a new style of walking. The long-legged and speedy Cataglyphus fortis normally covers ground with a three-legged stride that moves two legs forwards and one to the side and one to the other. For the next step, the insect mirrors the move with its other three legs. But recordings of ants in the Tunisian desert reveal that when faced with oversized lumps of food ten times their own weight, the forward tripod walking style is abandoned. Unable to lift the morsels in their mandibles, the ant drags the food backwards instead, moving all six legs independently. This is the first time we have seen this in any ants, said lead author Sarah Pfeiffer at the University of Ulm in Germany. The ants' long legs already help keep their bodies away from the scorching desert floor and enable them to speed around at up to 60 centimeters per second. Think of Usain Bolt, who has very long legs compared to his body size. The desert floor is also very hot, so the further away their bodies are from the surface, the better, said co-author Matthias Wittlinger. The ants have also evolved to function at body temperatures of 50 degrees Celsius in a desert where temperatures can soar to 70 degrees Celsius. They're basically just trying to get out of the heat, he added. Naturalist has been invited to speak to the members of a college hiking club. Listen to part of the discussion. Because of their protected status, a lot of bears have lost their fear of people. This may make them appear tame, but they're still potentially very dangerous. Bears are wild animals. One or two bear attacks occur each year in Glacier Park. The majority of attacks occur because people have surprised the bear. What should we do if we surprise a bear? You should try to avoid encounters in the first place by being alert and make noise, talk loud, holler. Bears will usually move out of the way if they hear people approaching. Some people say to carry bells or put bells on your pack. Most bells, even the so-called bear bells, are not loud enough. Calling out or clapping hands at regular intervals are better ways to make your presence known. But isn't it kind of rude to make a lot of noise in the woods? I mean, people go there for peace and quiet. In bear country, noise is good for you. Hiking quietly endangers you, the bear, and other hikers. People sometimes assume they don't have to make noise while hiking on a well-used trail. Some of the most frequently used trails in Glacier Park are surrounded by excellent bear habitat. You can't predict when and where bears might appear along a trail. That's for sure. I remember my surprise when a black bear charged me. It must have been running away from hikers who surprised it on the trail ahead of me. Don't assume a bear's hearing is any better than your own. Some trail conditions make it hard for bears to see, hear, or smell approaching hikers. You should be especially careful near streams, against the wind, or in dense vegetation. Stay with your group and, if possible, avoid hiking early in the morning, late in the day, or after dark, when bears are more likely to be active. Bears spend a lot of time eating, so avoid hiking in areas like berry patches or fields of glacier lilies. How will the bear act if we surprise it? Bears react differently to each situation. They may appear to tolerate you and then attack without warning. The most important advice I can give you is never to approach a bear intentionally. Each bear will react differently and its behavior can't be predicted. All bears are dangerous and should be respected equally.
Every year, about 10 million tons of paper winds up in American landfills and incinerators, which is not only wasteful but adds CO2 to the atmosphere. Recycling helps, but even that material has to be repulped and paperized before you can use it to print out that recipe you'll never make. But what if you could wipe the page clean and use it again? Light amplification by simulated emission of radiation to the rescue. A new study shows that laser light can erase the toner from a piece of printed paper. The approach appears in the proceedings of the Royal Society A. Taking a page from the Art Restoration Handbook scientists sampled a variety of light sources to see if any could be used to strip the ink from laser printed documents without damaging or discoloring the paper. UV and infrared were too harsh. But a bright green laser applied in 4 nanosecond pulses vaporized the print, leaving paper that looks as good as new. Such imprinters will probably run about 30,000 bucks, so they probably will not catch on for home use. But people in the recycling world might find that the green laser fits the bill for making paper that's really green. Doctors know a lot about prescribing medications. Take two brisk walks and call me in the morning. But for many patients, a light get moving plan might be just what the doctor should have ordered. Many of us aren't exactly in peak physical condition. But a large number of people are actually deconditioned. So says the Mayo Clinic's Michael Joyner in an essay in the Journal of Physiology. After surgery, illness, pregnancy or extended inactivity for any reason, People might feel faint or fatigued when they try even mild exercise. These signs, Joyner argues, should be recognized by doctors not as symptoms that should be treated with drugs, but rather as a medical state of deconditioning that might be better helped with a gentle, guided exercise program. It might sound counterintuitive that fatigue can be beat back with exercise. But remember Newton, Isaac, not Fig. A body at rest stays at rest. And a body in motion needs to resist external forces acting upon it that might slow it down. A lot of people just don't feel quite human without that morning cup of coffee. Now a study finds that the enhanced sense of well-being that caffeine can cause is reflected in our perception of words. Specifically, caffeine increases the ability to recognize words associated with positive thoughts, but doesn't provide the same boost for words with negative or even neutral associations. The research is in the journal PLOS One. Scientists assigned 66 subjects to one of two groups. Half got a 200 mg caffeine tablet, a dose equal to almost three cups of coffee. The other half received a sugar tablet. Thirty minutes later the volunteers were shown strings of letters, and had to decide as fast as they could if a string formed a word or was just gibberish. The volunteers recognized words with positive associations much faster than either negative or neutral words. Other studies have shown that positive words tend to be recognized more quickly, but the caffeine increases the gap. So next time you wake up with a grumpy sweetheart, your compliments might be appreciated more if they have a cup of coffee first.
The Mayans were a group of people who lived in Central America. They developed an advanced civilization. It lasted for... <coughs> Excuse me. It lasted for many centuries. Its high point was between the years 200 and 900. The Mayans are famous for a number of things. They built many city-states. These were like small countries. Naturally, the center of each was a city. Farms surrounded these cities and supported them with food. Mayan cities also contained exceptional works of architecture. The ruins of some buildings can be seen today. There are both large palaces and stepped pyramids. The Mayans had a writing system and literature, but they didn't use paper. Odd, no? Instead, they wrote on stone, wood, and tree bark. Lots of writing was done on the insides and outsides of their temples and palaces. They also formed books from tree bark, but sadly, few of these books have survived to the present day. What happened to them? Well, first, the heat and wet weather of the jungle destroyed many, but Spanish conquerors got most of them. They actively sought to destroy the Mayans' written records. Fortunately, other objects, including Mayan works of art, have survived. We can see some of this art on the stones of their temples and palaces. The Mayans were excellent pottery makers as well. They created figures of stone, clay and wood, and they even made some objects out of metal. But there are few extant examples of any metal devices. Land animals move easily through air because air does not slow them down. Sea creatures, on the other hand, have to move through water, which is hundreds of times thicker than air. A sea animal has to push itself through water in order to move. Sea animals use many different ways to swim, creep, or glide through water. Fish are able to swim by bending their bodies into waves. They have flattened fins and tails that push against the water like oar blades, converting their body waves into forward movement. The size of a fish's tail contributes to its swimming speed. Small tail fins are found in slow swimmers like the eel. The medium-sized tail of the bass is linked with a medium to fast swimming speed. Long pointed tail lobes like those on the marlin are found only on fast swimmers. Sea mammals like whales and dolphins swim in a very fish-like way, except for one important difference. Because their ancestors lived on the land, they developed tails that moved up and down. Whales and dolphins wave their tails up and down, rather than side to side like fish do. The seahorse is a fish whose tail is not used for swimming at all. The seahorse uses its thin, coiled tail to attach itself to seaweed, like a monkey's tail holds onto a tree branch. Squids and octopuses move in a completely different way. They use a type of jet propulsion, shooting water out through a nozzle to force themselves along. And then there are the creatures that live on the bottom of the sea. Sea slugs, limpets and whelks creep on a single flat piece of muscle called a foot. Ripples pass along the foot, which allows these animals to glide smoothly forward. The theory of personality types suggests there are pairs of what are known as type preferences. Type preferences are not the same as character traits that can be worked on and changed. Rather, they're preferred ways of being in the world, different, um, different ways of uh, experiencing daily life. One well-known pair of type preferences is extroversion-introversion. Some people are extroverts and some are introverts. Extroverted people are by nature continuously aware of events outside of themselves. Extroverts turn outward to the world around them to pick up uh, ideas, values, and interests. Extroverts, therefore, usually have a variety of interests and sort of take an active approach to life. Introversion is just the opposite. Introverts look inward for resources. Introverts pursue fewer interests, but on a much deeper level. They sort of take a reflective approach to life. What I mean is they involve themselves in inner events, ideas, and impressions. Introverted people usually prefer to learn in private
Early jazz musicians were active in many cities and towns throughout the southern United States. It was New Orleans, with its long tradition of African American music, that was the home of many fathers of jazz. After World War I, the musicians of New Orleans joined the general northward migration of African Americans. The first great national center of jazz was Chicago. From there, the music entered the mainstream and even gave its name to the decade of the 1920s. Jazz, blending African American folk roots with elements of popular music and European classical traditions, has been called America. Classified advertisements placed by individuals in newspapers and magazines are not covered by the Advertising Standards Authority's Code of Practice. If you happen to buy goods that have been wrongly described in such an advertisement and have lost money as a result, the only thing you can do is bring a case against the person who placed the advertisement for misrepresentation or for breach of contract. In this case, you would use the small claims procedure which is a relatively cheap way to sue for the recovery of a debt. If you want to pursue a claim, you should take into account whether the person you are suing will be able to pay damages, should any be awarded. Dishonest traders are aware of this and often pose as private sellers to exploit the legal loopholes that exist. That is, they may claim they are not in a position to pay damages. Height is correlated with a lot of things. Up to a certain height, taller people make more money than the vertically challenged, and the taller presidential candidate almost always wins. Now a study finds that your height as an adult has a profound effect on your perception of your health. Short people judge their health to be worse than average or tall people judge theirs. The research was published in the journal Clinical Endocrinology. Data for the study came from the 2003 Health Survey for England. More than 14,000 participants filled out questionnaires and had their heights measured. The study only looked at how good the subject thought his or her health was, not their actual health. Questions focused on five areas, mobility, self-care, normal activities, pain or discomfort, and anxiety or depression. Men shorter than about 5 foot 4 and women shorter than 5 feet reported the worst impressions, but small increases in height at the low end had much bigger effects on perception than the same increases among taller people. Other studies have shown, ironically, that shorter people on average actually live longer. This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Wade Gibbs. Got a minute? If you want to see evolution at work, visit a hospital. Inside a sick patient, antibiotics wipe out infectious bacteria by the millions, but germs are always mutating. A few adapt to resist the drug so they survive and spread. Such antibiotic-resistant bacteria infect 2 million Americans every year. They kill 23,000. In this arms race between medicine and evolution, evolution is winning. But could we turn evolution against bacteria? It turns out that when bacteria mutate to become resistant to one antibiotic, they often become more vulnerable to a different drug. So maybe after a jab with the left, a roundhouse to the right will deliver a knockout blow. To test this idea, researchers in Denmark dosed batches of E. coli with 23 different antibiotics and waited for resistance to evolve. In three quarters of the cases, the mutant germs became more susceptible to a second drug. The work appears in the journal Science Translational Medicine. One particular combination of widely used antibiotics, genomycin, then cefuroxim, then genomycin again, and so on, looks like it could hold the bugs at bay indefinitely. Resistance is futile. Thanks for the minute. 
For Scientific American 60 Second Science, I'm Wade Gibbs. The field of journalism has been seeing job declines for decades. Many businesses near the campus offer students discounts. Reserved collection books contribute to the most achievements of students. Weather patterns have changed significantly over the past 200 years.